Good morning. Welcome to Metropolitan Community Church in the Blue Ridge. <clears throat> We're glad you're here with us to worship on this first Sunday of spring and moving on through Lent. And we're just hoping that you will be able to find newness and hope in this season as we move forward. Our opening song today is Trading My Sorrows. You all know this, you know you know it. Sandra's going to help us sing along. Tuesday nights at 7 as we continue to move through that last week of Jesus' life. I really enjoyed the one about the uh, Palm Sunday Triumphal Entry last week. I hope you did. Sometimes I just enjoy these myself, and if you get two, that's great too. A um, couple of other announcements this morning. First of all, after church today, if anyone is hungry, someone in the church is offering to treat everyone to lunch at Jersey Lily. Jersey Lilies just down the road toward the hospital there on the left. Um, is anybody going to be able to go and do this? Anybody? Let's see. Hey, keep your hands up. I got a head count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, let's count on ten to be sure. Um, just go and we'll try to get seated. I'll be there as quick as I can. Try to get seated and um, whenever we get there, we'll just tell the Waitress that all goes on one ticket, and I get the ticket, but I'm not paying. Hallelujah. <laughs> no dishwashing will be required. Okay? This is an anonymous donor. And if you didn't put your hand up, and by the end of church you're hungry, come on, we'll add a couple more in. Many of you have been asking what's happening with 806 Jameson. Jeffrey and I met with our agent, Leroy Worley, on Friday, and finally got the word that the, company, the group we've been working with will not be buying the building. They finally uh, decided. I had to go through a few choice comments. They finally decided on that. And so as of Friday afternoon, it went back on the market. We're moving the price back up to the original asking price. If you drive by there, you'll see a big sign out in the yard before too long. It may already be up, I'm not sure. And we'll move forward. Um, there are already a couple people that Leroy is getting in touch with. And, you know, God's got somebody who wants and needs that building. Amen? Amen. 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 And meanwhile, we are blessed to be able to be here and to continue to move forward. That is going to require that we refinance our loan. And we're glad that the bank is working so well with us on that. 
and it's all going to be fine. But we hadn't told anybody anything because we didn't know anything till Friday. So he puts a pen to the paper, and I told Leroy, just show me the green. Just show me the green. Amen. Amen. Uh, you may have seen in the notice that went out to MCCBR Facebook page that we are going to be forming a pastoral search team. That's because my contract finishes the end of August this year. It was supposed to have been up the end of August last year. And due to COVID, you remember everybody extended their contracts one more year. So instead of finishing with you at 70, I get to finish with you at 71. <laughs> but just like God has a buyer for our building, God has someone next to, to lead this wonderful bunch of people. If you are interested in being on the pastoral search team, there are applications up here right in front of the computer. We encourage you to get that and turn that in by next Sunday. We'll be having a congregational meeting on the 6th of April to elect those people. That's the only thing we'll be doing. It's not a big, long meeting. And according to our bylaws, we need to elect three people. The board of directors is also on that team, but we need to elect three people from the congregation. You know this church. All of you sitting here have been here more than once, except our one minister. And we are so glad that you've got that history. Some of you have been here longer than I have been. And that feels like an awfully long time. But I know that God has the right people and the right person, and we'll be looking forward to taking care of all that. Any other announcements? Now let's continue with our next song, Your Grace no, is Enough. No, no, no. Pardon me? No. Where he had an announcement? He just had an announcement that he's precious. Okay, <laughs> Your Grace is Enough. <laughs> Sunday morning show this morning about how it's affected so many children, either from the loss of their parents or from the total change in their school. Also for those who are trying to help all of us as we get through these days. 
it goes beyond saying that we need to pray for the people of Ukraine. The saddest thing I've seen on TV in a long time was 109 strollers mm. sitting in a town square representing the number of children who had been killed during this war. Mm. We need to pray for those people and for their brave president. I wouldn't try to say his name because I don't have it written in front of me, but you've seen him, you know who he is. And I so admire him. Mo asked prayer for our Aunt Leela. It's her last living aunt who has cancer that's metastasized to bone cancer, and she is choosing no treatment. Also, travel prayers for Kathy. If any of you know Chastity Scott, who was part of Micah's Rule, she's been having a rough time again with heart issues. So if you keep her in prayer, and if friends of hers, Ronnie and John, as prayers also. Kathy had gone off to go on a little trip, got to her brother's and got very sick. She's doing better and is moving along on the rest of her travels now. <clears throat> Dennis Hoover, who follow us up, follows us on Facebook, as prayers, he has some difficult decisions coming up regarding surgeries. Lee Waller, who is a member of this church, lives in Florida, is in the hospital again with a lot of seizure disorders. So if you keep Lee in your prayers. And Nelson put out a prayer request on Tuesday night for his sister. She had stomach surgery with laparoscopic, but it was very involved. And she did fine, and she is home now. And he was very thankful for that. She lives in California. In California. Other prayer requests or praises you did not get. Paula? I drove today. Amen. Yes. 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 Even Rudy thinks that's great. Jeffrey? I have a family friend who's almost a, like a part of our family. Um, in the hospital, something to do with her heart. The last message I got, they were taking her for a heart catheterization. See other hands? Yes, Laura. Uh, so I've got two requests and a praise. Uh, one request is for uh, Sammy Deal, who has visited with us before. Um, prayers for his parents and his family. They've been having some struggles. And also prayers for my Aunt Sabrina. She lives in Dallas. She's out of, been out of work for several months and is getting pretty frustrated and looking for work at this point, so just prayers that she finds a job soon and an apartment that she can afford because she's not going to leave the apartment she lives in. Um, and a prayer, a praise that my parents are celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary today. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. <coughs> yes. I'd just like prayers for my mother who is sick. She is uh, having to go through some tests this next couple of months. Um, she's looking for a Mm -hmm. So they think maybe the honey up and that's just kept the come back. Come mm -hmm. back. We're not sure, so we'll have to have to go through tests. So if y'all want to say some prayers, she's in Winston, right? Winston Salem area. Yes, yes, ma'am. The friend that I've had y'all pray for, uh, Susan Clark, she went with her brother and her sister to, to visit the old grandfather's farm where. I think one of the sons was able to continue, and he took him around to different places in, in cemeteries for family and had a chance at just connecting, doing very, very well, and then that's a praise. And then I have another praise is my daughter, and I, two and a half years of COVID, she's been using my car, and now she's actually on the process of getting a car. She'll get one car or another, or whatever it is that's like going to happen before April 1st. Yes. And then I want you to put to someone who's an extremely strong woman who has cancer. Her name is Shelly Jasper, and she has now had, one time when she had a surgery, she had a stroke, and she couldn't walk. She walked. Lord be well. This is the kind of woman with strength. She needs the strength, but now she had many strokes, and her hand sometimes doesn't work. And But she's, she's one of those fighters, and she's giving her life to work that helps other people so that she can create something, a legacy for her family. It's an amazing woman. Just prayers to just really her. And I have a friend that I forgot to write down on my list who is dealing with some serious addiction problems and is in treatment. So if you keep that person in prayer, I'd appreciate it. Any unspoken? Okay, look around. Did you see that hand? Did you see that sleeve, that watch, that ring? That's your cue this week when that comes back in mind to pray for that person, whatever it is. Let's pray. 
Loving God, I give you thanks and praise for the ways you have maintained the life and work of this church for all these years, almost 36 years. I thank you that you have always brought here the people and the pastors and the leadership that we need, and you have not gone out of business. I praise you that you will continue to put your blessings on this place, these people, this ministry. Be with each of the people we've mentioned, those who are sick, those who are dealing with things like cancer and other illnesses, those who are facing surgeries. Remind them that they stand not alone, that there are people here in Roanoke that are joining them in hearts and spirits. I thank you for the praises, for the ways that you help people recover, like getting Paula behind the wheel again. The other ways that you do that just seem so small, but we know your healing touch is there. We give you all the thanks and all the praise for all the ways you bless us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Alrighty. Um, so now comes the time in our service uh, to collect the offering. Um, and I... Um, was planning to give the call today, so I was thinking, what am I going to say? And I remi was reminded, thank you, Holy Spirit, of the Bible verse of the day in my Bible app this morning, which some of y'all may also have on your phones or devices, that um, it's from Isaiah 55, that my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. Um, this is God saying this to Israel. Um, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts than your thoughts and my ways than your ways. And I think it's important for us to remember when we have so many struggles and things that we're having to worry about um, that God's grace is sufficient and the best way we can show our faithfulness is to give back what God has already given to us. That means money, time, energy, whatever God is asking. So uh, I ask as the plate comes around that you give as you're able. Uh, also feel free to use PayPal or um, send to our address um, if you want to give that way. But uh, just ask you to give faithfully as you're feeling led. Thank you.
rendition of that song I've never heard. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. gifts that are embodied in this church. Thank you for the offerings in this plate. Thank you for the hands that touch. Thank you for all the ways you provide. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 That's one of the things I love about MCC. Something like that can happen and everybody just kind of goes, okay, what next? <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. That was just beautiful. I had no idea. Uh-oh. That's oh. next. I had no idea that... Um, Flute had that range, you know. Thank you for starting my sermon today, uh, Laura. I know, I just realized. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, think that's called, right there. I think that's called spirit synchronicity. <laughs> Amen. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 through 9. Hey there, all who are thirsty, come to the water. Are you penniless? Come anyhow. Buy and eat. Come buy your drinks, buy wine and milk, buy without money. Everything's free. Isn't it interesting how this hits on a Sunday when someone's offered to buy everybody's lunch <laughs> after church down at Jersey Lilies? Hmm. Everything's free. Why do you spend your money on junk food, your hard-earned cash on cotton candy? Listen to me. Listen well. Eat only the best. Fill yourself only with the finest. Pay attention. Come close now. Listen carefully to my life-giving, life-nourishing words. I'm making a lasting covenant commitment with you. The same that I made with David, sure, solid, enduring love. I set David up as a witness to the nations, made him a prince and leader of all nations. And now I'm doing it to you. You'll summon nations you've never heard of. Nations who've never heard of, your, of you will come running to you. Because of me, your God, because the Holy of Israel has honored you. Seek God while God's here to be found. Pray to God while God is close at hand. Let the wicked abandon their way of life and the evil their way of thinking. Let them come back to God who is merciful. Come back to our God who is lavish with forgiveness. God says, I don't think the way you think. The way you work isn't the way I work. For as the sky soars high above the earth, so the way I work surpasses the way you work. And the way I think is beyond the way you think. Hallelujah. Isn't it great that God's thoughts and actions are beyond and greater than ours? You know, I used to joke that if I got to be God for the day, the first thing I'd do would be to make baby toes on a swivel. <laughs> Think about it a minute. How many times have you cracked your baby toe on something? <laughs> you know? <laughs> but then I think, oh, if I were God for a day, some of that would be really good. Some of it would be pretty scary. You know, any of us. Any of us. Isaiah here was writing to the people of Israel who were in captivity, who had thought that surely God had forgotten them. God had taken them hundreds of miles away and just left them, took them away from their center of worship, their beautiful temple, and just left them. And Isaiah was called upon to remind them it's not over. It's not over. He gives a wonderful invitation in the first part of the scripture. Come on, everything you need, everything you want is here and it's free. You see some of those commercials, I don't know if it's about a tax thing or whatever, free, 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 yeah. free, 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 free. <laughs> Took me a while to figure out what the commercial was even for. <clears throat> but God is saying, everything you need, I will provide. He said, well, have you looked in my gas tank lately? Have you looked in my refrigerator lately? Have you looked at my savings account, if it exists lately? That's not what God's talking about. Talk about those things we need for substance of life, for assurance of life. That wonderful invitation. Invited, and you notice it's invited to all. Invited to all. He talks about David, but the same invitation he gave to the people of Israel when they were headed into the promised land. Remember, he said, I'm taking you to a land flowing with milk and honey. Hey, some of y'all good. Thank you. Milk and honey. 
And then Jesus said, come to me for living water. water. Boy, y'all getting good grace today. Come to me for living water. These are not promises that, that uh, Isaiah just pulled out from thin air. These are things that God has promised forever. And he talks about the price of it. The price is free. I've said this before, and I'm going to keep saying it fairly often. There's not one thing you or I can do to make God love us less. And there's not one thing we can do to make God love us more. There's not one thing we can do to help God provide for us better or less. Because God is a God of ampleness, abundance. And it's free. It's free. At Pride in Charlotte, we often had a little side area where I offered to serve people communion. And uh, I'll never forget one lady coming up to the booth, so if you've heard the story before, and she said, you really would serve communion? I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, well, I, I don't have much money. How much does it cost? And it just, every time I tell the story, it just breaks my heart again. Because I was able, and it enlightens my heart, because I was able to tell her, honey, it's been paid for a long time ago. But she had come from a faith community where you had to pay for things like that. Christ was free. And it's promised, the promise that Isaiah is giving people here is a promise of life, of life, of life, of life. I love how, how Isaiah, speaking for God, says, pay attention. Come close now. Listen carefully to my life-giving, life-nourishing words. Sometimes we need to shut up <laughs> and come closer to God. We need to shut up and get in that quiet place. Praise music is wonderful. Rock in the house is great. But sometimes we need that quiet place to shut out everything else that's going on around us. And just listen to God's life-giving, life-nourishing words. And he goes on to say it's a lasting covenant. There's no time limit. There's no time limit. God doesn't say, okay, I'm going to love you till you turn 13 and you figure out you might be different than everybody else. God doesn't say, I'm going to love you till you're 21 and you're earning money and you better be giving a lot of it to me. God doesn't say, I'm going to love you till your retirement age and just kind of hope you keep, I keep loving you. There's no time limit. There's no expiration date. You know, I don't know about you, but we tend to have things in our cabinets and refrigerators that, that have expiration dates. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and sometimes they're not March 20th, 2022. <laughs> we went through our cabinets a couple months ago, and there were some things that had a 19 in them, I think. <laughs> But there's no expiration date on these promises of God. No expiration date. And then it talks about seek God while he's here and while he's able to be found. The good thing about that is it doesn't say it, but God is always here. God is always waiting to be found. It doesn't matter what room you're sitting in. It doesn't matter how you're dressed. It doesn't matter which Bible you're using or not using. I cannot comprehend sometimes the extensiveness and the patience and the presence of God to always be there. I lose my patience. I don't mean to hear an amen. Okay. <laughs> I lose my patience. And especially, <laughs> especially when I was teaching math to kids one summer. These kids had had a really bad math teacher. And the parents, it was a paid Christian school, and they were all up in arms. And I said, well, I can, I can do the math part. Don't put any letters in. But I can do the math part. And I realized that I could explain to you one way, maybe two ways, maybe three ways. If you didn't get it then, I was gone. I couldn't get it. And I came up with the craziest things, like long division. Anybody remember long division? Oh, yeah. With decimals? Oh, yeah. And having to figure out where that went. I said, okay, if you move it two spaces here, and this one over here is jealous, so you have to move it two spaces here. And that made sense to the kids. But beyond that, they were on their own. But God can try and is able to understand this over and over and over. Many of us have been so on fire for God at times, and then something will come along and pull us off track. And, and instead of God going, oh, come back, 
Now, it just whispers quietly off and it says, I'm here. I'm still here. If you're not as close to me as you used to be, who did the moving? Who did the moving? And Isaiah goes on to share that to do it now, be, before it's too late. Not because it's before it's too late that God gets tired of us and writes us off, but because we will miss that time with God. We'll miss that peace. We'll miss that joy, that grace that's sufficient, that trading that's available. To take all the, excuse me, crap in our life and turn it over to God. Now, that doesn't happen instantly, and many times we have sticky fingers. We give it over to God, but we have to take it back for a little while. You know what I'm talking about? So it's not too late that it'll run out. It's too late so that we'll miss the joy and the positiveness of all that. And then goes on to explain. God explains how God can do this. Because I ain't you. I'm not you. I don't think the way you think. I don't act the way you think. I don't work the way you work. And that should always make us go, thank goodness. Thank goodness. And it's not just different. You notice? The way I work surpasses the way you work. And the way I think is beyond the way you think. Hallelujah. God never gets frustrated with us. Maybe want us to pull them back in a little better. But God doesn't carry the grudges that we carry. God doesn't carry the anger that we carry. God doesn't carry the disappointment that we carry. Because God is not us. God is God. And beyond anything we can think, imagine, want, desire. Encouragement. It's all about encouragement. And I hope today if... If you're needing that encouragement, you heard it. I hope if you need it today, you heard how to obtain it, how to get close to God and do that. But most of all, I hope that the main thing I hope you heard today is that God is greater than we are. There was a badge for many years that said God is greater than AIDS. God is greater than our low gas tanks. God is greater than our low checking accounts. God is greater that anything we think we might need, God is greater. Amen. Amen. More than looking forward to the day we don't have to wear masks, I'm looking forward to the day when we can once again serve communion. I don't know when or if that will happen. But meanwhile, I'm glad that somebody invented these wonderful little individual cups. And at, toward the end of communion, Jeffrey will be coming around again with a basket to collect your empties. I'll tell you one quick story. One church was in the, I think it was in the Bristol, Johnson City area, way back, many, many years ago. And they served communion wafers. But then they passed out the little medicine cups, you know what I'm talking about, with grape juice. And there was no place to put those. Okay. I go outside after I was guest preaching. And I look over at the smoker's corner, because there's always one, bless your hearts, burnt offerings. And someone was using those little communion cups. <laughs> I was, I mean, honey, I was way conservative then. I was blown away. <laughs> so we have a receptacle for those empty cups. <laughs> Thank you. Jesus' life that we're looking at in Bible study. We have a few days before we get to the night this symbolizes. But that night he took bread from table. He lifted it, he gave thanks, and he blessed it, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat of it, each of you. And when you do, remember me. He took a cup from the table that night, and he lifted it to heaven, and he gave thanks for it, and he blessed it. And he said, this is my blood.
poured out for you is an everlasting covenant, everlasting promise of the forgiveness of all sins. And when you drink from it, remember me. And we're reminded of the mystery of our faith, but also the work of Christ. We share each week that Christ has died, Christ has risen, risen, and Christ, Christ is coming again. again. Hallelujah. Coming again one day in all his glory, but coming again each day, hopefully, in our lives as we experience the joy. Christ's body broken that we may be healed. The love of God shed abroad in all our hearts. Brothers, go forth this week knowing that God is enough. Not just your grace is enough, God, but God is enough. After our closing song, I invite you to go down to Jersey Lilies. If you want to try to hopefully wait and get a big group together. And we will be there to share in a meal that's free. <laughs>